Hello. Uh, so I'm Yaroslav from Light Novo, and welcome to this Light Novo webinar on RG Raman microscopes. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, so basically, to start with, we'll talk about Raman spectroscopy in general, just as an introduction. In Raman spectroscopy, the sample is probed with a laser. You can probe solids, powders, liquids. You can also probe through the container. Then uh, the signal is generated. And then there are, in Raman spectroscopy, there are, as you know, probably almost all of you are familiar with Raman spectroscopy. So there are three different types of signals. Relay scattering without the change of the wavelengths. And then there is uh, Stokes scattering, which is red shifted, and anti Stokes scattering, which is blue shifted. And typically in Raman spectroscopy and Raman microscopy, we we'll look at the red shifted Stokes scattering. Then the <clears throat> signal can be analyzed. And uh, for instance, in many cases, you would like to know the fingerprint of the substance and to identify the substance. And uh, when we talk about Raman microscopy, it's basically uh, Raman spectrum is collected at each pixel of a microscopy image, and you get hyperspectral Raman data. Uh, so uh, briefly about our company, Lightnova APS. Uh, the company was founded in uh, 2019 by our CEO, Alexey Ilchenko. And our mission is to democratize the power of high-end Raman spectroscopy and actually microscopy uh, for the benefits of mankind. We are probably can be called an international company. So our headquarters are located in Birkerol, Denmark. Uh, we have um, a branch in the UK, like Novo UK Limited. We also have uh, multiple remote employees across the globe, mostly in Ukraine, and our chairman is located in the USA. Uh, so here's uh, an outline of this webinar. And in the beginning, um, well, I already gave some introduction, but I'll give an overview of our product lines. Then we'll uh, talk, uh, I'll show some slides about RG microscopes. Then um, uh, I will uh, broadcast a video of RG microscopes operation principles from our lab. Uh, then uh, I will do live demonstration of Miraspec software with some examples of applications. Uh, it will be data analysis in Miraspec software, um, microplastics, uh, pharmaceutical applications, biomedical applications. And after that, uh, there would be a brief, uh, like 10 minutes or so, question and answer session. And please, uh, if you have uh, your questions, just type them in the chat uh, during my presentation, and then I'll try to answer them in the end. So um, uh, since this webinar is about RG, what RG stands for? RG stands for research grade. And um, here's the, we have basically three product lines and RG is one of them, uh, probably our main product line and RG, we have RG Raman microscope and we have RG Raman spectrometer. And it's a modular system where RG Raman uh, spectrometer goes inside of RG Raman microscope. Um, then uh, what I should mention that we have a broad range of different laser wavelengths and uh, some of our RG microscopes could be compatible with multiple different uh, RG Raman spectrometers. So it's like uh, the RG Raman spectrometer is like a swappable unit and you can acquire, for example, one RG microscope like 
five basically compatible with 562 and 785 nanometers and get two spectrometers and then you get two wavelengths in one device and then you can just swap the spectrometers or you can use the spectrometers as a standalone unit as well uh, so uh, another product line it's uh, more compact uh, mini raman spectrometers and microscopes uh, so the advantage of this product line compared to RG that they are more compact, but uh, due to compactness, there is a trade-off. So they are a bit more limited in terms of uh, performance, such as resolution or choice of wavelengths, etc. Uh, then we also have um, quite an advanced uh, product line, SOAR, Raman microscopes and uh, spectrometers. And here... You basically, it's like a tool for advanced researchers and overall Raman performance leader with uh, such uh, advanced capabilities like measurement of uh, 16 polarization channels simultaneously. But uh, on this system, we'll have a separate webinar. So now let's focus on RG uh, microscopes. So RG Raman microscopes. Uh, actually, because I mentioned um, this mini Raman product line and what uh, uh, I should also say is that RG Raman microscope is compatible with both RG spectrometers and mini Raman spectrometers. Um, then the uh, uh, technical specifications of RG spectrometer, uh, RG microscopes are summarized in this table. And uh, I'll uh, quickly go through it. So basically, an advantage of this system is that uh, we, compared to the competitors, is that we have simultaneous visualization of the uh, visible, basically visible microscopy and acquisition of Raman signal. So you always see the laser spot. You can always monitor if you damage your sample with too high laser intensity and things like that. Uh, in addition, um, this uh, microscope can be used in both upright and inverted configuration, uh, where you can just uh, flip it over and use it for uh, the samples which could be measured in inverted configuration. The uh, stage, and we have XYZ stage, uh, very advanced uh, uh, mechanical uh, automated uh, stage uh, uh, with uh, the uh, travel range along X and Y, which is pretty big. Uh, it's 10.2 uh, by 10.2 centimeters, and along the Z axis, it's uh, 2.5 centimeters, which allows to use uh, to measure different uh, samples of. Uh, big size or to integrate the system into some uh, some lab setups. Uh, the uh, step size lateral and axial are 0.1 micron, which is also pretty good and allows to acquire images with uh, the uh, diffraction limit. So the physical dimensions of the system are um, approximately 45 by 50 by uh, 34 centimeters, and the weight is approximately 20 kilos. So this makes uh, this system uh, pretty compact for the uh, for its uh, specifications. Uh, so let's now go through the technical specifications. And here in this table. There are technical specifications of RG microscopes when equipped with mini Raman spectrometers. And actually, with mini Raman spectrometers, uh, here we have uh, the choice of laser wavelengths. So, mini Raman, it can be 785 single wavelengths or can be dual 660 and uh, or 675 and um, 785 nanometers. In addition, there are different uh, classifications of mini Raman with respect to power. It could be standard or it can be power. And the same goes with this dual unit 660785. It's um, a power dual or standard dual. 
And here, different uh, power range in the sample, as you can see, up to uh, 90 milliwatts on this sample, depending on configuration. And the power is tunable by the uh, current of the device. Um, Mini Raman, actually, and then as I mentioned, uh, it's uh, quite limited compared to RG. So here, the spectral range starts from 400 inverse centimeters. But for many applications, it's uh, acceptable, uh, especially for just uh, fingerprinting of uh, compounds. So the spectral range 400 to 2700 wave numbers for the single uh, wavelength 785. And then when it's dual, it expands the spectral range uh, up to 4000 wave numbers. And um, Basically, we have a separate webinar on, uh, we had a separate webinar on mini Raman spectrometer, but here how it operates is that you have the same optical spectrometer and two lasers and the second laser just expands the spectral, the spectral range. Um, so the spectral resolution of mini Raman is actually uh, pretty good for such a compact spectrometer. It's 7 to 15 wave numbers. And uh, with uh, mini Raman spectrometer, you can get uh, lateral resolution uh, down to uh, 900, 800 wave numbers. And the actual wave numbers, sorry, nanometers. And the actual resolution of uh, three microns. Uh, but what I wanted to say that this system is uh, kind of like basic configuration in terms of uh, its uh, spectroscopic uh, capabilities more advanced is RG. Uh, so the RG microscope equipped with RG Raman spectrometer. Here we have a um, broader choice of or wavelengths, so it can be 532, 785, like these two classical wavelengths from a spectroscopy as well. Addition, in addition, we have 405 nanometers and 633 nanometers with um, the power range in the sample, which is well tunable from 0.1 uh, milliwatts and up to uh, 75 milliwatts, but here you can see depending on the laser wavelengths, it's different maximal limit. The spectral range also compared to mini Raman system, it's um, uh, broader, you can start at lower wave numbers. Uh, the spectral resolution for the standard uh, system, it's four to six wave numbers. And we also have um, the HR, modification, it's high resolution, which is um, um, basically two to four wave number spectral resolution uh, for almost all of the laser wavelengths we provide. And uh, however, there is a trade-off that the spectral range would be limited uh, compared to the uh, standard uh, RG spectrometer configuration. So in this case, with RG, you can basically get a uh, diffraction limit. So for example, for 785 uh, nanometer laser, you can get uh, the lateral resolution 600 nanometers. Uh, so now I would like to broadcast a video on the operation principles of the RG microscopes, we shot this video in the lab. And let me let me launch the video. Hello, today we are with Pascalis, who is our assembly engineer, and we will show to you how to use our RG Raman microscope. A G Raman microscope, as you can see, is quite advanced microscope. And Pascalis, can you please remove the doors or maybe in the beginning show that we can access the sample from all the sides? Yes, 
easily access the sample from all the sides, and we have advanced uh, translation stages with the motion range 10 by 10 centimeters. And can you please remove the front door to show what's inside? And inside we have a micron type module with 50x microscope objective and then light, light novel RG Raman spectrometer. This current spectrometer is 785 nanometers, but we as well have another option, for example, this 532 nanometer spectrometer, and they can be easily swapped by this axis from the top. So, Pascal, could you please assemble everything back? And we'll demonstrate the functionality of the software and the principles of how to measure the samples. So let's start the software. We click on mirror spec, shortcut on the desktop. So this software is launching. Let's wait. Because our software can control the multitude of different late novel instruments. So here we already loaded uh, a proper preset, the RG microscope. I don't think we need to do it again. But Pascal, as you can show that you can do it from help. We go to help, we go to help, and then there is an option set configuration. But we're not doing that, and then you load the proper preset. So let's connect the device. We click on connect in the bottom of the screen. Then you can see here it should load the instrument. I think there is some minor problem with connectivity through the USB port. Check if the device is connected, maybe disconnect and connect again, because the stage is working. Now everything is fine and we can see that the device is loaded, COM20 port, the spectrometer serial number 4008, and then the stages, and then also the ambient temperature inside and humidity inside of the air. Uh, so, what we'll do next, I think we need to home the stage to make sure that the operation is the proper one. And Pascal is going to please home. Now we're home, and as you can see, everything is moving to its home position. Reaching the end switch, and then moving to the home position, X, Y, and Z. So with this device, you can do X, Y mapping, you can do Z scan, and you can do basically collect the cubes of data as well. So we'll show it to you later. So now we'll just do start some basic focusing on the sample and spectroscopy, and we'll start with a piece of silicon, piece of silicon wafer. And Pascal, this will put it in the microscope. We'll show how to focus and how to get basic Raman spectrum. We'll put it on the microscope objective. And now the Z stage is in, in the lowest position. Now Pascalis will focus on the stage. And we actually have with the sample, we have two cameras. One camera, it's looking from the side. This is looking from the side, and you can see it over there in the end. Then there is this camera, and another camera is looking through the microscope objective. Please switch the camera. We choose the proper device, and file, start the camera. Now we have the proper camera, and then it's far away from the device and then now we have to switch LED controllers as well. LED control, LED is on full power, LED is on top, on top over here. And then we'll focus on the sample. So we have the manipulator tab here, X, Y position, Z position with the 
x, y, z, and the z steps. And then uh, Pascalis with the z arrows will uh, focus on the sample looking at the visible image. We are moving up. You can see we are moving up. Here yeah, now we're approaching it. Now we have to be more careful not to crush the objective. And uh, yeah. So now we can maybe increase the step size. It doesn't matter. Now you know you know what to do. Okay. Now we see the well, the light is appearing. Now we'll focus on the sample. Okay. Nice. And now we see the surface of silicon wafer with some scratches on it. I mean, this is the silicon. So now um, what we can do, we can turn the laser on. Uh, we can turn the laser on. And as you can see, there is a laser spot. We can focus more properly. Now a very small laser spot. What we can, And then we already see silicon spectrum. Now what we can do, we can also adjust laser power. Scott is please adjust laser power. I increase it and click on. And we can see a slightly brighter spot at almost 50 milliwatts. And increase power of the signal. Another option we have here is the exposure time. Exposure time, please change it maybe to 500. 500 on. And then the intensity increased. We can scale it, maybe fit to screen, or how it's called fit to window. Yeah, now it's already saturated. So 500 is too much. Then now we go probably to how much? To go back to 250. Go back to 250. Laser on. And uh, as you can see, now it's, it's not saturated. So the device is very sensitive, so already the exposure is 500 milliseconds, saturate the sample, and let's maybe measure something, let's take a spectrum, let's do a repetition count, maybe 10, just to do some averaging, 10, and we click on capture, and let's see what happens, the gray line is the spectrum being captured, now it ends green, it's captured, and we see uh, the typical Raman spectrum of silicon, with the line at around 520 inverse centimeters. So let's probably change the sample and let's go to polystyrene. So Pascal, let's switch the laser off to stay on the safe side. And now yeah, you can move the stage probably. <clears throat> stage down. Take the Sample out with us. Did you hold the stage? Or? Yes. Okay. But in principle, it's just okay to move along the Z direction. You can move down, no need to hold it all the time. Um. We take a piece of polystyrene. Polystyrene is a reference sample for Raman spectroscopy. And actually, we calibrate our devices with polystyrene, spectrally, as one of the steps. Do it according to the standard procedures. And now, okay, now the stage is at the bottom position. We, Pascalis moves it up to see the surface of the sample. Okay, now we have some light and maybe the surface. Yeah, the surface will just turn the, the sample is transparent and that's why you see a dark image, not so much reflection from it. But let's see the laser spot. So the laser spot now is not in focus, we have to focus back. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. There's some 
scattering like this concentric rings, but what matters is the laser spot. That's why you measure. And uh, now we see, can you please do the fit to screen? Here we see a typical spectrum of polystyrene. And let's maybe capture this uh, spectrum again. We do the same under the same sentence. We just do capture. And uh, <coughs> is it captured? Yes. It's captured again. But it's not showing plot captured sample. It captured now because you will have an option to plot live spectrum, plot captured spectrum, and plot the reference spectrum which is relevant to mineral. Now we're using RG spectrum. So now it captured, and we see in green it's the captured uh, realm of spectrum polystyrene. <coughs> Hello, I'm Yaroslav, and I'll show you the method functionality of our like novel RG. So we are already in mirror spell software again. Pascal is doing some measurements on polystyrene and I'll show the mapping of polystyrene. So what we have to do with the mapping, first we have to go to Raman mapping settings and we have to make sure that the X and Y coordinates axes are loaded, we load all of them and then we want to do X and Y mapping obviously and then here we have X and Y, and we have options, start coordinate, range, counts uh, of steps, and the step size. So uh, first, we as we go to this image, visible image, we already want to start with the current spot and uh, as an initial coordinate for the map, and we click on this arrow to load the coordinates. And as you can see, the start coordinates changed to 300 and minus 500. Now let's specify the range. Let's uh, say that we want to do 100 by 100 micrometers uh, scan with the number of steps. Let's say, I don't know, 6 by 6. Let's say, let's do a map like that. And then that would mean that the step size is 20 microns. So 100 by 100 microns with a 20 micron step. Then we need to make sure that we choose the proper laser, 785 nanometer laser, uh, units in wave numbers. Then we have an option to turn the laser off. We also have an option of zigzag scan if necessary, uh, but let's just do normal scan to start with. Then we have to specify the file name which would be polystyrene. Polystyrene, and then we can start the scan. So now uh, the scan started. Go to Raman Rapid Viewer. And as you can see here, there is a progress of the scan. So now it's 13%. And um, let's go to Raman Map and Viewer. We have to um, choose the, here's Raman Map and Viewer. Have to choose the proper coordinates. Uh, it should be, I believe, X, Y. And we um, choose the wave number, which would be, let's say, 1,000. 1,000 and with half weights, let's say, 20. And it would be showing the intensity, as you can see, of this 1,000 um, polystyrene peak uh, as a map. And we can switch to other wavelengths, wave numbers uh, to to mapping and then you have all the information in the data file and later on you can process with the data analyzer. Uh, that's all what we wanted to show. Thank you for your attention.
Okay, so that was the video and uh, I hope the sound was uh, quite uh, clear. Otherwise, uh, we just uploaded uh, this video we recorded in the lab to YouTube so you can visit our YouTube channel. So just search uh, for Late Novo APS on YouTube and then you will find lots of different interesting videos on Raman spectroscopy and microscopy. So actually what I wanted to show now is that uh, we can, with the G Raman microscopes, we can go far beyond just uh, measurements of silicon and uh, polystyrene as we showed in the video, just some simple samples. Um, but here I, I'll show some examples. It's again mirror spec software. Uh, it's a bit newer version than uh, what was uh, shown in the video with uh, upgraded uh, GUI. And uh, we go to Raman Mapping Viewer, and here I loaded um, a couple of different images we have recently acquired in the lab. So uh, this, uh, this is uh, an example of some measurements of microplastics. So micro, the polystyrene beads on calcium fluoride. And here you can see the size of the beads um, around uh, one micron, so pretty good uh, spatial resolution. And then um, here in the, what we can do, we can look, uh, we can uh, in the, uh, the uh, parameters panel, we can go to the wave number 1000 now it would be displaying um uh, the map for this wave number and actually so the data is uh collected for all the wave numbers so each single pixel uh it it contains the spectrum and then you can actually click on the image and you see the spectrum so here it's polystyrene bead and here if i click over here it's calcium fluoride calcium fluoride substrate and here polystyrene bead and actually, uh, you can also, uh, the spectrum, then you can look at different peaks by clicking at, at the specific peak, and you can see the map for this specific peak. What uh, is also possible uh, to do with RG Raman microscopes is to do Z scan. And here it's exactly the same sample, but when we focused on one of the polystyrene beads, and we do, we do that scan. And uh, here uh, you basically see the profile of the Z scan. And then you can also uh, basically look at different uh, uh, or display the spectrum at different Z positions of the sample. Um, then uh, what else? Uh, so this image is uh, an image uh, of uh, a uh, pharmaceutical tablet, ibumetin, and here we can do mapping of a tablet and uh, basically um, see if it's like homogeneous. So do analysis of distribution of different components in the tablet. Uh, here's an example of uh, biological imaging. So it's uh, an image of some cancer cell. And here, for example, we click here, then there is nucleus, and then there are some um, specific uh, features for that. And then you can also do some, um, uh, you can use this system for biomedical applications. Um, so uh, that's basically what I wanted to show. And uh, let's now go to the questions. So please uh, type uh, your questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, I will uh, try to answer them. Okay, I see... First uh, uh, question, 785 nanometer as excitation, what laser power on the sample? So as uh, I have mentioned uh, during the 
talk, I'll repeat it again, is that uh, it depends on the spectrometer and power on the sample can be up to approximately 100 milliwatts for 785 nanometers. And uh, if you use uh, uh, standard RG spectrometer, it's probably starting from uh, a few milliwatts, but we as well have RG spectrometer, so-called LPR, large power range, where the power is tunable by polarizer. And there you can basically go to very, very low powers uh, below 0.1 milliwatts. And uh, so that you can be sure that even for very sensitive samples, you won't be damaging them. However, go into very low powers, and of course you would need to do the mapping longer. Um, and again, if, you, if the question was, if the person who asked the question was concerned about high powers, then definitely for many samples, 100 milliwatts is more than enough, and usually it's above uh, the damage threshold, and uh, there is doesn't make any sense to go to much higher powers, especially if you use like objectives like uh, 100x, where everything is tightly focused to the spot below one micron in size. Um, next question, I guess from the same user. Uh, I see some Chinese characters or Japanese characters in the name. Unfortunately, you cannot read that. But uh, thank you for asking another question. Are there any uh, safety feature for the laser? For eye from the sample compartment? Just small question. Uh, so in principle, uh, well, the safety features are the, the doors there. So it's the system is fully enclosed. And then uh, if you would like to stay on the safe side, you just switch the laser off, then you close all the doors, and then uh, you start the laser. And uh, by doing so, you are uh, completely sure that you are protected from laser radiation. Although when you use the uh, microscope objectives, then the beam is really divergent of the focal, the working distance is uh, very small, the beam is very divergent, so, and then this is uh, class uh, 3B laser, so even if you have specular reflection, like even if you try to measure something on metallic surfaces, then even if the doors are open in the system, then uh, it's very low chance that uh, you would get any injury from a laser like that. Uh, next question, I think from the same uh, user. Uh, can we overlay spectral image and visible image? Um, actually, uh, we are working on this uh, feature in the software and it will be implemented soon. So it's not available yet, but soon to be implemented. Uh, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, can we do a PCA to find out uh, the main substances present in the sample? Uh, yes, uh, the PCA feature is uh, already in built in, in the MiroSpec software. And uh, you can uh, identify the substances present in the sample. Unfortunately, I did not show this data, but for example, when we talk like about microplastics, we did some measurements where we had uh, different uh, microplastic beads. So for example, polystyrene, uh, PMMA, and other plastics, and then PCA, separating uh, the uh, them uh, and showing uh, that uh, you have different substances, what is not possible to do from just visible image. Uh, how about chemometrics like a PCA or MCR? 
to get the image, not just peak height. Yes, uh, it's possible and it's inbuilt in the software. And I think uh, we'll have a separate webinar on advanced uh, features of uh, uh, mirror spec, like data analysis, where we just uh, focus on uh, uh, the data ad advanced uh, data analysis methods. Uh, so any other questions? Uh, please, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat. Um, can we do measurements with microfluidic devices? Um, yes, uh, it's possible. And uh, we actually have some customers uh, or potential customers who are interested in uh, that type of applications as well. And uh, I don't see any problem with integration of the microfluidic device. Uh, and uh, in addition to this uh, standard RG microscope, I must say that we have an OEM version, where it's basically what's inside, but uh, without the outer box and without uh, stages, and then you can probably more easily integrate into your own setup where you have like more connections like wires, uh, tubing and uh, whatever. And uh, this, this can also be done easily. Uh, any other questions? Yes, there is another question. This is not question for microscope. Okay. Can we install a probe to RG Raman to see real time? Uh, okay, I I have more questions. Uh, this again, uh, can we install the probe to RG Raman uh, spectrometer probably to see real time uh, norming and see chemical reaction? Um. Uh, yes. I think the well monitoring of chemical reactions it's one of the potential applications here and uh here if you talk about uh that's if you talk about the probe we have like probes with different working distances because it's just like free space spectrometer but if you are asking about uh fiber probe then uh it's not available yet but it's under development. So we'll have uh, the uh, RG spectrometers with fiber optic probes available on the market soon as well, which is probably more suitable to monitoring of chemical reactions in the reactor. And uh, regarding the software, uh, then um, uh, actually it's not like fully implemented in because we have time scans but if you want advanced features uh you want to look at specific peaks or do your own data analysis we have an sdk software development kit available and then uh, it's uh, compatible with python and c and you can easily program um and do your own graphical user interface uh in python for example and then monitor whatever chemical reactions and calculate some coefficients ratios of concentration real time etc uh, so according to application note about microplastics you use matlab program is it possible to analyze microplastics by a program itself Okay, so actually it is, it is possible uh, to analyze with the program. So we have um, actually the, the menu. So we have this analysis menu and in, this, in the analysis we have uh, PCA and other advanced features. Uh, but of course, not everything is implemented in mirror spec and um, uh, it is possible to do more advanced data analysis in MATLAB or Python. So I personally prefer Python. 
and uh, but basic basic uh, data analysis is uh, doable in mirror spec uh, another question okay it's uh, some customer wants to meet and in november thank you thank you see you in november and for others if you are interested in our devices please visit our website and uh, contact us by email and uh, thank you for your attention thank you bye